Cause I know he's rescued my soul His blood has covered my sin I believe I believe My shame is taken away My pain is healed in his name I believe I'll raise a banner My Lord has gone to the grave My Redeemer lives My Redeemer lives My Redeemer lives My Redeemer lives I know He's rescued my soul My shame is taken away. My pain is here in his name. I believe. I believe. So I'll raise a banner. My Lord has conquered the grave. My Redeemer lives. My Redeemer lives. My Redeemer lives. My Redeemer lives. Jesus and his resurrection. Confess him with your mouth and call upon his name and you'll be saved. Thanks guys for being in here, youth. Love you guys. Appreciate you guys. Look forward to you guys preaching. We get to, lot, we get to watch. We've gotten to do some of that. Didn't this guys do so good today? Thank you. John, thank you for doing sound. Terry, thank you for doing overheads. You guys did a much better job than if I was running back and forth. Oh, Ben's asking if his guitar could be muted. I don't know why he never asked that he would be muted, but... Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now out there? Can you guys hear me? Do you need me to turn up the volume? I can do, what do they call that? Um, oratory. It's loud. God said, oh, that's fun. But I'll save that. There you are. You got to be careful. No, it's so fun. Sometimes I come in here, you know, when my, my uh, three worship times, I come in and, and um, I get going and I don't always use a microphone. Every once in a while I do because that's how I tweak the sound system. I've been doing that for a lot of years in different churches. And I, uh, one of the ways I, I do that. Um, if... Uh, I'm going to hand these out. If you didn't get a card from us, we had these on the seats. If you already got one, just be kind and take one. 
<laughs> I couldn't find him this morning. I had to go looking for him, and I, I found a bundle in the counting room, all bundled up away. Yes. <laughs> oh, you got the baby, no fairer. Yeah. Good morning, young man. I don't think I've met you. John, good to meet you. You look familiar. It wasn't me. So this is our attempt to try to get out a Christmas card. Because I don't know about you, but I am notoriously bad at getting around to it. Holy... You know, I love that picture. That was... Uh, I took that picture of... Uh, Mira's coloring book, and it was fun because I was I was preparing the sermon and um, and I knew I knew the subject and all that, and she brought it over, and and in a way she was bugging me, you know how three year olds can be, right? And she was interrupting what I was working on, and she flopped this down, and I re and I, at first I was like, all right, you little booger, go over there and play. I probably literally said that. I'm sure you guys have never called them boogers, but I call them boogers. And uh, the uh, anyways, and then I looked at it and I went, oh, that's perfect. Because the Lord says that. He's here. Here I am. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice, opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person and they with me, Revelation 3.20, you see he's saying, uh, as he says in other passages where he says, if you seek me with your whole heart, I will reveal myself to you. That's a biblical absolute. Do you know that? You know, we used to think that cashier checks were absolutely good. Do you know a lot of places won't take them anymore? At the, uh, there's a lot of stuff like that that are non-negotiables now because they're garbage i've actually had one that lapsed i didn't in fact it said it was good for three or five years or whatever that was um from the date to the printing i don't remember how it, it went but the um i took it down to the bank we were doing some work on our house and in redmond and um i took it down to the bank and to cash it and um and they said oh this is outdated i said no, there's two years to go, or three, whatever that was. And they said, no, uh, no, it's, it's no longer in our system. We had a system change. I said, well, I didn't. And I was nice. Don't get me wrong. I was in customer service for a lot of years. And so anyways, I'm like, I knew it wasn't their deal as far as the bank went. And thankfully, we have friends in those areas, and they got it taken care of. Um, <laughs> but... They're like, oh, yeah, it could take six months to a year. And I'm like, I don't think so. Anyways, but with the Lord's help, we got it taken care of. So let's get to this. Salvation. The Lord is standing at the door of your heart, and he's knocking on it. Hello, anybody home? Anybody here ever watch Star Trek? You don't have to admit to it, but, you know. And one of the, one of the uh, most, well, I'll ask you, what is one of Scotty's, or I'm sorry, um, Captain Kirk's, what is one of Captain Kirk's most used lines? Beam me up, Scotty, there's no intelligent life here. Oh, my goodness. You can say that in church, can you? Um I mean, if you can use, oh, yeah. Anyways, but that's the deal. There's just, it's like, Lord, get us out of here. They're nuts. They've lost their marbles. In fact, during one of the elections a few years ago, when uh, a person was, was elected into office and, and there was a lot of election stuff happening in Oregon that was twice as dumb and, and stuff, and I turned to Becky and I said, we need to get out of here. We need to go somewhere where there's people that love Jesus. Because I was basing it on the vote. I wasn't basing it on people in the church or whatever kind of a deal. 
And, and I'm not kidding. The Holy Spirit hit me like a ton of bricks and said, why would I send you where I don't need you? I'm like, ouch, right? Okay. And I, you know, I'm not opposed. I'm just like, I'm like, okay, well, that makes total sense because, you know, if you're going to do some work, at least do something worthy to be done. And if there's no work to be done because there's a church on every corner and it's just a bunch of disgruntled people running around trying to get their way. And so they just keep moving around and changing like they do their skivvies and they, and they just, they just flounce off and do their own thing. And, you know, every drop of the hat, they're, they're flouncing off to a different one and this and that. And you know what they really do? They're teaching people how not to follow Christ. That's exactly what they're doing. Because they're not following anything other than their appetite. They're not teaching anyone how to follow Christ. They're teaching people how to follow their appetite. And the Lord says, actually, it should be all about him. Amen? It should be all about him. Him and his ways. So we need to admit that we're a sinner. I think that's the first one. Oh, I forgot I threw this one in. This is out of the complete Jewish Bible. As the Tanaka puts it, which is the Old Testament, that's what that means. There is no one righteous not even one no one understands since all of sin and come short of the earning god's praise for what earns from sin what one earns from sin is death but eternal life is what one receives as a free gift from god in union with the messiah yeshua that's jesus christ our lord yeshua is his hebrew name that if you acknowledge publicly with your mouth yeshua is lord trust in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be delivered. That's what saved means. For with the heart one goes on trusting, thus continues towards righteousness, while with the mouth one keeps on making public acknowledgement and thus continues towards deliverance, salvation. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten or unique son, so that everyone who trusts in him, that's faith, may have eternal life instead of being utterly destroyed. For God did not send the Son into the world to judge the world, but rather that, that through him the world might be saved, since everyone who calls in the name of Adonai, that's, Jesus, that's Yahweh actually, Adonai, will be delivered. And that calls on, we'll get to, we'll get to some points here. <laughs> Pretty close. All right. You ready? Let's say those bullet points together. Admit you are a sinner. Believe in Jesus and the resurrection. Confess it with your mouth and call upon his name. These are the prerequisites. We have Romans chapter 3 there, verse 10. As it is written, there, there is none righteous, not one. The Bible says that none are without sin. No, not one. None is righteous. What is righteous? The true righteousness in its base, 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 base understanding is when, you're, when, you, re, when you understand righteousness, it's, it's when you understand God has a right to do, to do or tell you anything he wants because based on Genesis 1.1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And of course, based in John, the book of John, we know that all things were created by him, for him, and through him. Talking about the Son, Jesus Christ, whom the Father said, go ahead, Son, go ahead and create. Do you guys want the lights up? Does anybody want the lights up? Okay. All right. You guys look so much... No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but there is none that are righteous. And righteousness is to think and or act like God. And again, base righteousness is that God has a right to tell me how to think and act. In fact, he let Adam determine the name for the birds and the bees and the animals and the 
maybe the trees that just rhymes, right? But he also named one in particular. When she was created, he rightfully said, Whoa! Man. He was... And they hadn't even invented the lazy boy yet, or the couch. But he knew how to stay off. Well, none of us are righteous. Revelation, I think it's in chapter 3, but the Lord says this to one of the churches. He said, you know, you, you, you think you're something, and everybody thinks you're something, but, but you're not. You're, you're pitiable, poor, and blind. And, and I may be mixing up a couple verses, but what I do know is this, is that he says, you've lost your first love. What does that mean? Well, all of us who have ever courted, all of us who have ever tried to date and woo somebody to our side, um, there are things you cannot do and get them to come to you. Right? Like be rude, stupid, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. If we're going to be righteous... If we walk in righteousness, if we walk like God, if we, if we think and act like God, that's going to actually draw other people to God. But we're going to struggle with it. And one of the other things that draws people to God is when we go to them and say, I'm sorry. You ever had a misunderstanding? If you haven't, you've only been boring. Little do these babies know... They've already had misunderstandings, and they belly ached about it. <laughs> you thought they just wanted their diaper changed. It turns out they also wanted milk. There was a misunderstanding. Anyways, none of us are righteous, not even one. All need to admit that we're sinners. Everyone. I don't care how much you've given to the poor. I don't, it, it, biblically, it doesn't matter how much good you do. It doesn't matter how good you think you are. <laughs> that means you're a legend in your own mind, probably. But it doesn't matter. What matters is, are you righteous? The only way to be righteous is to know you can't be on your own. Therefore, that means you're a sinner. You're someone who's not doing things the way God would or would approve of. And you need his help. The next verse is Romans 3.23. For all sin and fall short of the glory of God. Now, there's different renderings in the Jewish Bible. It says that it has fallen short of God blessing them for the way they're living or, you know, uh, that kind of thing. I look at it this way as well, is that um, the glory of God is the revealing of God um, or it can be blessing for sure. But it's when we sin, we don't reveal God for who he is. The way, and by the way, you were created to reveal God. It, Years ago, I'm on sabbatical, I'm on a lake, I'm out on a kayak, and I'm, I'm meditating on the Word of God, I'm studying and studying and studying, because that's what he led me to do, and I'm, I'm, I'm actually meditating on, actually, Revelation 1, 2, and 3, the three, first three chapters, mostly in chapter 2 and 3, and I had a whole stack of books I was going to read, never got to, but I got pages and pages and pages of notes. Anyways, and I'm out there, and there's, and it's in this region, and there's an eagle that is, I would say, miles away, and it's soaring, and it's huge, because it's miles away, and you can tell it's a big one, and I'm like, whoa, that's cool. Now, see, I was an Air Force cadet. I, I flew remote control planes. Gliders was one of my favorite. I had a 12-foot wingspan glider. I still have one. And the, um, I think it's one of my, well, it's 10 or 12 foot. But we had a 12 footer. And I'll never forget, we were at um, Detroit Lake. And we used a power pod and we got it up. And, and we lost the power pod in a tree when it parachuted down. 
It found a tree, and so we never got it back. But the point is, I'm up there thermaline with this 12-foot wingspan glider, and I'm thinking, that must be a hawk up above there. Well, all of a sudden, the bird folds its wings into an attack dive. And I'm like, oh, this will be cool. I'm, and I thought it was under me until it opened its wings and they were about equal, if not bigger. And I realized my plane is doomed because the talons came out. And <laughs> so I'm trying to make a glider nosedive that has stall tips on it. And I can hear the, the um, wing going up, up, up. Up, and I'm like, uh, that probably can't be good. So I looped it and blah, blah, blah. And I got away. And <sighs> Anyway, so the eagle, so I know what big eagles are and what they're like. And I, I revere them. Anyways, so this eagle is flying. I'm in my kayak and I'm just floating along. I'm, I, I would go to one end of the lake and let the, the, the soft wind blow me back to where my camp was. And then if I wasn't done... I'd, I'd go back to the end of the lake and I'd let it float me back while I was meditating on the word. Well, anyways, this eagle's flying around and as it's flying, the Lord says, do you see that? I'm like, yeah, thank you so much. That is so awesome. And this is what he said to my heart. He said, that eagle is absolutely glorifying me in every way I designed it. Notice it's barely moving its wings. You know, they move their tail a little bit to make corrections. And the wing here and there, it was totally thermaline, which is floating on there. And as it is, the, it was just soaring. And it was so beautiful. And then later on, one of the things I got to witness is that it ended up soaring over to the top of the lake. And then it came down, and from here to that plant, it got a fish out of the lake from right in front of me. <laughs> I almost fell out of the boat. Because <laughs> I heard the whoosh, and I, I, I knew what the sound was, because I, I had a hawk uh, pass me on a hillside one time when it pounced a rabbit in the bottom of the ravine. And that was super cool. And I, anyways, and this thing whooped past me and it slammed the water right in front of my kayak. And it came out with a fish. And it just soars with it. And then these stupid little blackbirds, sorry, I shouldn't probably say stupid. These knuckle-headed blackbirds, they come out of nowhere and they're trying to get it, the fish away. They're trying to get it for their own dinner. Do you know what an eagle does when... When um, not so smart little blackbirds, I'm trying to think of nice words, not so smart, sorry. So I'm like a dad with their kids, you know. You look. Yeah, anyways, we, you learn how to filter, right? So, anyways, you know what an eagle does when they're being picked at? Is it, unless they just don't kind of care, what they'll do is they'll begin to soar up and up. And they go high enough the other birds can't breathe. And it doesn't kill the other birds. They just pass out. And they fall away. And they generally probably come too. But isn't that so biblical? He said overcome because I have. I give you the ability. But you see when we're sinning. We're falling short of showing the world how amazing God is. By his design. So simple. So majestic. So powerful. And by the way, when he plucked that fish out of the water, scared the bejeebers out of me. <laughs> Anyways, when he did, he was glorifying God in how his, he was created to get his dinner. He went and got it. He didn't sit up in the thing and squawk and yell and ask for everybody else to go do the work. That was the little blackbirds. They're like, well, you go get the fish and we will torture it out of you. I just love that they just soar above 
I think that's so cool. All of sin falls short of the glory of God. All of sin. So, have you ever met those people who think they are without sin? Have you ever met those people who are God's gift to mankind for perfection? You ever met them? What do you want to do? That's the official biblical response. I'm telling you, it works. Right? I think they made a song like that. Get your her along. I'm so bad. Romans 6.23, for the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. You know, I'm always trying to be a little bit careful with the, the image of the description of hell is that the, lake of, that the second death is the lake of fire. And in the lake of fire, it says the fire never goes out, the canker never dies. So you're going to have, you get to have worms and you get to be burned forever. And I mean, it's just on and on and it's really bad. But that's the wages, that's the payment you get for sinning is death. And ultimately, of course, it's separation from God. It's not just you're going to burn and die, you know, burn forever, but you're going to be separated from God and his blessed attributes. And I've told you guys the story of a guy that I was at a Starbucks. Um, the Lord put on my heart. I, well, I asked him, where do you want me to study? I'm out of town. I think I was on a hospital call. And I asked the Lord, where do you want me to study? It was the Starbucks across from Fred Meyer and Ben. And so I'm there. I bought the cheapest little cup of coffee, drip coffee I could. Um, I, don't, I like some fruity coffee, but not very often. Anyway, so I had this little drip coffee. And I get done, and, and I, the Lord had me, you know, put my Bible out, even though I was doing my electronic Bible. But he wanted me to put my Bible out. And I'm thinking, oh, I'm going to get some questions, you know. And that's the ice coming down. Anyways, and so... I get done, and I'm thinking, well, nobody said anything, but I felt like it was time. Well, it was time to go. I had to get going. Anyway, so I'm, I'm going, and um, I get up. I get my stuff, and I'm packing it out. I got my Bible and my iPad and whatever it was, and I'm, I'm going out, and this guy gets the door for me. I'm like, thank you so much, and he's got this funny look on his face. Long story short, he, <laughs> he goes, so, as he's holding the door for me, you know, it's a double door set. So, if your God is so loving, why does he send people to hell? Thank God I had just heard somebody talk on this. Because God was preparing me. And, and they said the perfect word. So, I just said what, what the Lord quickened me to say, to remember of. Anyways, and it was this. He doesn't have to. People choose it for themselves. Because if you don't want to hang out with God on earth, he's not going to force you into heaven. Why would he force you to go somewhere for eternity you don't want to be? That's mean, right? So instead, he actually, do you know that, that hell was created? Hell was created for the demons, for the devil and the demons, for those fallen angels. That, that's what hell was created for. It had to enlarge itself to receive the rest who will be in rebellion. So you see... God, in his love, kindness, I, I would say maybe mercy, if, you know, is God goes, well, if you don't want to hang out with me, I, there's a place where you can hang out. You know, he doesn't have to throw them there. They can choose it. I'm not kidding. People do that. I know you know that, I would think. But I had somebody get really ticked off because their husband came to the Lord the last few seconds of life in the hospital in, in uh, John Day. And their husband came to the Lord and uh, even had us baptize him right there in the bed. And that was different because we believe in immersion. <laughs> we immersed him. <laughs> he was very wet. But here's the deal. And he died within... Minutes or seconds after that, whatever that was. But the, the thing is, though, is that she got ticked off. And I'm just telling you plain. She got ticked off. 
about the fact that they had made an agreement they were going to party with their friends in hell eternally and together. And of course, those of us who know the Lord just go, you know, go. Because they ain't going to be a party. It's going to be bad. The, the scripture says it'll be worse than anything, anything, anything. In fact, it's so bad that God doesn't want anybody to go there. Do you know that God does not take pleasure in the death of sinners, non-repentant people? Do you know that? But he says it is, it is a joy in the heart of God when one of his saints passes away. It's because they come to be with him. He's like, woohoo, welcome home. But when a sinner dies, he weeps because they'll never get to be in his presence again. So that's the wages of sin. But the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. You know, again, uh, maybe it's because I didn't grow up in the church, but I, I, I thought that salvation, until I had a lot more training, I really thought God just wanted us to be saved so that when we die, we can have peace and we can have heaven. That's not his, that's not his point. He wants us to have life more abundantly from the moment forward from when we come to christ he wants us to have peace in the midst of the hell on earth we go through he wants us to have peace and joy now he wants us to begin to enjoy our eternal life in christ jesus now but and if we'll keep a hold according to Again, the book of Revelation, if we'll keep a hold until the end, we get that reward, which is heaven eternally. But he wants us to enjoy it now. Too many people are waiting for the end. So here it is. Believe in Jesus, the resurrection. God so loved the world that he gave his only unique son. This is out of the complete Jewish Bible. It reads, it's very literal as well as the New American Standard, King James, whatever. So the wording is slightly different. Uh, anyways, for God so loved the world that he gave his only and unique son so that everyone who trusts in him, that is have faith in him, may have eternal life instead of being utterly destroyed. I love how it tags that on, how it clarifies the wording is so easy to work with. God did not send his son into the world to judge the world, but rather so that through him the world might be saved. You see, when we say salvation is free, we need to remember it's free to us, but it sure wasn't free to God, and it sure wasn't free to Jesus Christ. It was torture. It was, he got spat on. He got, it, they said that he was a, uh, a drunkard and a sloth said that he was uh he was misteaching um that he wasn't you know sticking to the word they they maligned him they despaired him they tried to kill him on and on and on and then they eventually they beat him these are his own kids that he had created and they beat him they 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 mocked him they they pulled out some of his hair they pulled out part of his beard. They pounded the, the uh, crown of thorns into his head. And yet, with all of that, he continuously said in the tense of the Greek verbs, he was saying, Father, over and again and again, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. That's hard to do, isn't it? When somebody dirty when somebody's treating you poorly when somebody is calling you a donkey when somebody is calling you mediocre when somebody's speaking poorly about you or trying to make it look like you're you're an idiot it's awful hard to say father forgive them they don't understand what they're doing is fighting against you it's it's hard to do that it's more fleshly to reach out and massage them. 
But the Lord set us an example. You know, the Father says this, leave vengeance for me. Leave room for me to bring vengeance on those who oppose you. And boy, that's better. God didn't send his son to the world to judge it, but rather so that through him the world might be saved or uh, released from the destruction they're headed for. You see, God isn't looking forward to beating you. God is not looking forward to hurting you. God isn't looking forward to harshly dis- disciplining. God is, in fact, um, it, it's in Laman, Lamentations, um, I think it's 333, but it comes out to, if you dig it out, and there's a couple verses you have to work with too, anyways, is that God does not willingly pour out his wrath on the sons of disobedience. So God even goes against his own will when he pours out his wrath, the thumos. God didn't send his son into the world to judge it. Rather through him that it might be saved. And by the way, if you're a Christian or you have become a Christian or you're thinking about it, one of the things he's looking for is someone who will reflect him so that others can see him. And that's why we're going over this because we don't want to take the chance that somebody comes into our midst and doesn't know for sure whether they're saved. That's a horrible thing. It's a horrible thing for a family to to think about what what has potentially happened to their kid or their loved one is what has happened. But thank God. Thank God for the opportunities to get to Share salvation and see what God can do. And he goes on to say in Romans 10, 9 and 10, that if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart, God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart a person believes, resulting in righteousness, with the mouth he confesses, resulting in salvation. Confess with your mouth. That doesn't mean lip service. Have you ever had somebody give you lip service? You ever had somebody say one thing and do another? You ever had somebody talk out of both sides of their mouth? (laughs) That's not something the Lord does. And he knows the motivation of your heart. He knows whether you're sincere or not. You know, he says the first will be last and the last will be first. Those who think themselves to be first in the kingdom of God, they'll get in dead last as as somebody barely getting through fire to get into heaven. But those who think themselves to be last, in other words, they're not seeking to be crowned all glorious. Boy, that ice is really having fun out there. Pretty cool. By the way, you don't want to stand under these eaves when it melts and the whole thing goes, oh, you will be baptized. We may not find you for a while. It's the other, other, other baptism. Eskimos probably do it that way, right? Just throw ice cubes at them. Just kidding. Here's the deal, guys. We need to confess with our mouth that Jesus is absolute Lord. He is the King of kings and Lord of lords. He is the first and the last. He's the preeminent one. If you're not sure, read Revelation 1, 2, and 3, and you'll get some descriptors, and of course you can get into Ezekiel and all that. But here's the deal. If you believe with your heart that God is raising from the dead, you'll be saved. But you have to believe with the heart. In the, in, again, in the other version, the Jewish version, it says you have to have trust with your whole heart. You can't just go, well, sure, I believe. Because it, you know, I'm, gr- I'm grateful that Christianity is no longer vogue. You know why? Because there's been just a multitude of people over the years, and there still is, <clears throat> but in, in general, especially here in the West, um, because it's tough to be a Christian in the West, is this, it's become less pretty to be a Christian 
And so we have less non-Christians calling themselves Christians, at least over, over here. We unfortunately still have people in the White House and the outhouses, <clears throat> however you should say that, that are calling themselves Christians. They're even offering to pray for you. And my answer is, don't you dare. I don't know what demon you're praying to, but it has nothing to do with Yahweh. has nothing to do with God. So that when, for with the heart, a person believes, resulting in righteousness. Because you see, when you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and you follow him with all of your heart, then you're paying attention to what he's doing, so you can do what he's doing. And, and what ends up happening is, is you start acting and reacting like him, you start responding like him, you start thinking like him, and, and you, in, in fact, he says, if you actively and consistently hang out with me and actively and consistently hang out in my word, ask whatever you will, and I'll do it to glorify my Father through me. And the, and the reason he say that, it's not name it or claim it, it's actually, you, you can name the verse and claim it, is this, is the, because you're hanging out with the Lord and you're hanging out with the Lord in his word and, and you're getting to know him as your first love, then what you ask for will be his will. Does he not always say yes to his will? Which one of you parents, when your child asks to do your will, says no? That'd be pretty weird. In fact, some children at certain age groups, if they said well, what would you want me to do today, mom or dad? The first thing that probably goes through our mind is, who are you and what would you do with my child? You know, but, but thank God, not always. They have their good days when they sleep in. I'm just playing. With the heart, we believe, we trust. And that belief is, it's a, it's a faith obedience belief. And it results in thinking and acting like God out of love and gratitude for what he did. And, and so with our mouth we confess, he is my Lord. He is mine. And I'm my beloved and he is mine. His banner over me is love. Right? That's why he's our beloved. It's because he loves us. And as my, my new favorite song at the moment is he, he says, I know you're proud of me, even though the times I don't deserve it, or even though at times I don't deserve it. But the point is, is it, it's just God wants so much to be proud of you. He wants so much to get to love on you. And just like the rest of us who, who get to lead and serve, it, all we want is for the the children of God are responsible for to just follow the Lord. And as the Lord said through Paul to uh, the Ephesians, whatever it was, anyways, when he was talking to him, he said this. He goes, oh, oh, I gain my life from the fact. I, I just, I start living. Woo! Because you're following the Lord like you should be. And it gives me life. It gives me vitality. It strengthens me because you're following the Lord the way that you should. It makes me know it is absolutely worth the effort. Oh, I become alive. You see, as an equipper, whether apostle, prophet, pastor, teacher, evangelist of the equipping ministries, there's nothing more exciting than to watch your team win because we're coaches. We are a servant. We are a, a saint. We do play in the game. We do put on the armor and we get out there and we get the ball and we run down the field. We do that stuff too. But for the most part, when we become a, an equipper, we're there to teach, train, and coach so you can win the game. And then we as coaches go, yes, you're winning. Yes. Isn't it that way with your children, grandchildren, nieces, nephews, friends, 
neighbors, when God has used you in any way to help them and they start thriving, you say, yes, of course you do. You'd be crazy if you didn't. Confess with the mouth. With, the, with our mouth we confess, resulting in salvation. You see, the, the, the being safe from destruction... <laughs> being saved from destruction isn't just the destruction of hell but it's also saved from destruction on earth because when we follow the lord we will be saved from some of the things we would have dealt with that we don't have to now the lord also says this if you'll follow him with all of your heart and really be his follower you will have flipses you will have pressures. You will have times of tribulation. That's the lighter tribulation. Thumos is the fiery hard one. But And we're not a set aside to that if we'll follow the Lord. But the point is, is that he says, if you follow me with your whole heart, you will have tribulation. But the difference is, yeah, you'll have tribulation, but you'll have joy and peace at the same time. It doesn't mean you don't want to go and massage people that desperately deserve it. It doesn't mean you don't want to thank them profusely in some impactful way. Romans 10, 13, for whoever will call in the name of the Lord will be saved. Seems so easy, doesn't it? Help! You ever done that? Well, your ears just started ringing. Help. That's not what this is talking about. This is talking about calling upon his name as, as your surname. This is calling upon the name as that he's truly there, that he's truly who he says he is, that he truly died on the cross for your sins. You're calling on his name that he truly went through Carrying the cross, being nailed to the cross, being beaten, being abused, being misused, being misunderstood, all of that. But it's calling upon him, not in it, and it's great to say help, and God does respond to our request for help. But this is when you call upon the name of the Lord, you will be saved. That is calling upon him as as being your father, being your creator, being your king of kings and your lord of lords, being your, your CEO, your CFO, all of that. That's what it's talking about. This isn't crying for help as much as this is saying the, that the Lord is my Lord. He's my king. He's my savior. That's the call upon here. That's when you'll be saved. Because the Lord knows there's a lot of people who just say, help! But they have no interest in being in relationship with him. And you know what I love about the Lord? Is that he says he even helps them as appropriate. He even helps them because he wants to reveal himself to them, to woo them to himself. Even though he knows there's still going to be bucket heads. Sorry if that's you. <laughs> but the point is, is that God wants you to call upon him that he is, he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him, that he really is the I am that I am, that he really did die on the cross for your sins. Here it is again. Whoever will call on the name of the Lord will be saved. How will they call on him in whom they have not believed? How will they believe in him whom they have not heard? And how will they hear without a preacher? If you think God doesn't want... If you buy into... Oh, I'm sorry. If you buy into the lie that God doesn't need you, you've been listening to Satan. No joke. If you buy into the lie that God can't use you, well... It, it, if, if you're not willing to follow the Lord, then it's possible God can use you like a donkey, or as somebody said recently in the King James Version, 
a jackass. I'm sorry, I hate that. But some, mm. how then will they call on him who they have not believed? How will they believe in him whom they have not heard? How will they hear without a preacher? There's too many people trying to be in charge. We need to do our jobs, not try to steal others. So faith comes from hearing, hearing by the word of Christ. So what do you need brand new babies of Christ? The word of God. Whose responsibility is it? Yours. You know what my responsibility is? Is to train you. If you don't choose to be trained, and I'm not being harsh. If you don't choose to be trained, that's your issue. That's unfortunate. And you will be held accountable. But all of us are called on by God to feed the young ones, the ones who don't know Christ or the ones who are new in Christ, to feed them the word. Look it up. But as for Israel, he says, all the day long I've stretched out my hands to an obstinate and disobedient people. Yes, I said it backwards. But he's doing the same thing today. And those who are chew the meat, spit out the bones. But the point is, is that we all need to make sure we're not being disobedient or obstinate to the Lord. Because this is what he says. Come unto me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke, not my yoke, his yoke. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. My yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Do you know why the Lord says come to him to get your yoke and your burden? Is because other people will, they will give you the yoke they want you to have so they can have the yoke they want to have. They want you to get the burden they want you to have so and then that way they get to carry the burden they want to carry. You don't get to choose what yoke and what burden God has for you. That's not your choice. And when we think that's our choice, then what we're doing is we're calling God a liar. Because the gifts of the Holy Spirit and the work of the Holy Spirit, or the gifts of the Holy Spirit, are given as the Spirit of the Lord sees fit, not as you see fit, or as I see fit. There's too many people wasting time and keeping people from coming to Christ because they're too busy messing with stuff they were never designed for. You're not going to find rest for your soul when you're chasing after what God didn't create you for. You'll find rest for your soul by chasing after Christ and taking on his yoke and his burden that he has for you and he anoints you for that yoke and that burden and that yoke fits you perfectly. And if you know anything about how yokes work, if they fit perfectly, they're easy to work with. I, it, I guess I would equate it. I've, I think the heaviest backpack I ever carried was like 70 pounds, which isn't a ton for some people, but for me it was at the time. I was younger. Anyways, <clears throat> but I know this. If you have the right fit and you have that, it looks like a cummerbund that came around and you have all the extra stuff and you're strapped in man you can move with that thing and it becomes easier but if you wear it sloppily you can't get anywhere you'll wear out real fast same thing with life we need to take on the yoke the lord has for us and do what he has for us and if the burden is too heavy if the yoke's not fitting and the burden's too heavy, there's two things that could be happening. Either you're frustrated and, you're, and therefore maybe you're trying to carry the load yourself. That will burn you out because when you try to carry a supernatural load in your own strength, you will burn out. Stick to his yoke, stick to his burden. And just a, a word of 
of warning. Do not force others to carry your burden, your cross, or to connect to your yoke because you're not willing to do your part. Make sure you're doing what God has told you to do. Here's where the Lord wants you and where he doesn't want you. He wants you in his grip. He wants you in his embrace. He wants you to know his love. He, wa he wants you to have it now and have it eternally. What he doesn't want is for you to be in the lake of fire that'll never go out. It'll never quit burning. That's the second death. He doesn't want you there. But it's interesting. Do you know that Jesus taught more about hell than heaven? It's the same reason we put locks on doors to keep little kids from getting into the poison. And we put Mr. Yuck stickers. I don't know if they still do that, but they used to be. Mr. Yuck stickers on things to, to say, don't touch that little Johnny, little Betsy, little whatever. Because Jesus knew it would be harder to keep people out of hell than it would be to get people to go to heaven. Because the Bible says, narrow is the way to righteousness to heaven, and wide is the way, and many are those who take it, most are those who take it, to go to hell. So we need to be careful. We know the steps of salvation for ourselves, and then, of course, the Lord wants us to share that. We need to be baptized. We need to be baptized in water and in the Holy Spirit. We need, God wants us to do supernatural work. He doesn't want us to do what we can do. Again, that's where the burden and the yoke doesn't work, is when we try to do it in our own strength and our own abilities. But if we're baptized in the Holy Spirit, it gives us more strength, supernatural power to be able to do what God wants us to do, to be a greater witness in the world for him, not so we can be shinier, or sought after that's what the devil tries to get us to do because isn't that the pl the ploy of the devil isn't that what he did but we need to be baptized if you come to the lord then we need to be baptized that's what that tank is for there's still water in it and we need to be baptized for the remission of sins in that it's an obedience thing but we need to not hop that and not do it Look at this. The Lord was talking to his, he appointed 70 others to go out in pairs ahead of him. Every city was about to go. And he was saying to them, the harvest is plentiful, the laborers are few. Therefore, beseech the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into the harvest. Go, behold, I send you out as lambs in the midst of wolves. What is he saying? You ever, you ever been at, a, at an event where you're a part of the event? And everybody leaves except for two or three people, but everybody else leaves and doesn't do anything to help clean up. That's kind of what it is in the kingdom of God, is that there's a, there's a few workers and everybody else just leaves the work to them. And again, if this is stepping on your toes, praise God. If it's not stepping on your toes and you're just saying, amen, then you know what? Chew the meat and spit out the bones on it. But know this, the Lord has told you as much as me, go, I send you out as lambs in the midst of the wolves. This is not going to be an easy job. Do you know at no point in time in scripture does the Lord say, if you love me enough, you'll never go through hardship. What a joke. But he does say, if you love me, if you follow me, I will take you through or over or around whichever he chooses, because when you go through things, it, it tempers you and prepares you for the harder things that you need to get through. It's also where your character shows up. And I'd like to say, boy, I'm always perfect. Every time I get challenged, I always respond perfectly. But these, this roof would not withstand the lightning to correct me with. And I'm not wearing my asbestos skivvies. This is where Jesus wants us. 
He wants us to admit we're a sinner, believe in Jesus Christ and his resurrection, confess with our mouth, and call upon his name as our personal Lord and Savior. I'm going to ask if everybody close your eyes. Father, I just thank you so much. I thank you for who you are. And I thank you that you can cause your servants to stand. In fact, you even uh, had your servant write down a, a comment to their enemies. Oh, enemy, oh, enemy, you may see me fall. You may even laugh, but I'm getting back up because my Lord can make me stand, and I know he will. So, Lord, today I pray that if there's anybody here or that will be watching online, I pray that, Lord God, that have been listening to this message, that admit they're a sinner, and they would admit they've come to believe in you and that you were raised from the dead. They've come to admit that they would confess you with their mouth and that they're willing to do that and that they're doing it maybe even now and that they would call upon your name as Lord and Savior, Master, Father, Abba. Because we believe in you. So God, I pray that those who are here and maybe those who are watching online, that they would leave a comment to let us know. But with every head bowed and eye closed, I just want to, I need to ask the question. I don't want to, it just doesn't matter if I want to, but I need to ask the question. Will you say to the Lord, I will follow you with my whole heart. If you have not done that before, would you raise your hand to the Lord and nobody else? Good. I assume we're all sinners. Or sinners. We're all sinners. That's true. But saved. Lord, we come before you. We need to be reminded of what it, what it is to be saved. There's so many people out there wondering what it is. Some are still wondering because they, they stopped into a place that had your name on the door, but you weren't present or not allowed. Some don't know because they don't have enough information because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And they haven't had somebody tell them. So Lord, I pray that every one of these steps to salvation will be used. It has the scriptures on it. Will be used to help people come to Christ. To invite them. That these will be used as invitations. And that many will come to know you as Lord and Savior. God, have your way. In Jesus' name, amen. Stand with me. Let's see if you guys remember the song. Lord, bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you. Be gracious to you. Lord, set his face towards you and give you peace. Amen. 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 I pray your blessing and your favor upon your kids. I pray for those that are shut in, those who can't get out, those who don't get to be out. God, I pray that, Lord, you'd be with them. I pray for those that they have migraines and those that have different ailments or those that are just as not safe to be out. God, I pray your special presence with them. 
Lord, I pray for those who will see this online or, or watching. God, I pray in the name of Jesus that, Lord, that your presence has been with them and is with them. And, Lord, that you are leading them to yourself. And, God, thank you for letting us serve you. Pray, Lord, of the harvest, send in the harvest workers, but only if you'll double the guard around them. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, God bless you. Love you guys. Thanks for coming and hanging out. Appreciate it. God, we need you so much. We need you more. We need you more. Yes, Lord. Need you, Lord, need you, Lord, need you, Lord, more than ever, Lord. Thank you. Move your hand by your power. We need you, Lord. So while we're in this time of prayer, we're going to prepare to receive communion. Gene, you want to come help? I waited for him to get all the way over there. Todd? to see how Ben's going to do this playing the guitar. So we do what's called open communion. That means anybody who loves the Lord is open to partake. So today we're going to be talking about salvation. And the reason that we partake of the bread and the juice is to, as the it says, in remembrance of me. Yeah, I didn't grow up in the church, so I always wondered why those had that. Why does it say that? <laughs> and then it wasn't until I got trained that I went, oh, that's what that's for. Oh, I didn't know that because we're commemorating what Jesus did for us. And the Lord tells us to examine ourselves to see if we're in the faith before, or to see, and if we're walking well, 
before we partake because some become sick and some don't survive. Um, but the Lord wants us to think about, think about our relationship with him. And for just a moment here, Hayden, can I get your help? Can we switch it over to the iPad, please? Come on. <laughs> so you're getting a copy of the main screen, Steps to Salvation. And on this screen, this was from a coloring page from Mirror's coloring book. And it has Jesus knocking on the door and it says, here I am. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice, opens the door, I'll come in and eat with that person. And they with me, Revelation 3.20. And the eat with means I'm going to hang out with you. And biblically, it's inappropriate to hang out with someone who calls themselves a follower, but isn't. Anyways, what he's saying is, I'll accept you and I'll come in and I will dine with you, which is a high high thing. Uh, we've had friends that have gotten to uh, dine with some pretty uh, influential people over the years and uh, if you, each of you could, could have one. <laughs> You see, we need to prepare to meet our maker. And before, and well, and with and before we receive communion, we need to think about this. Have we admitted that we're a sinner? Because we need to do that. We need to admit that we make mistakes and that we come short of glorifying God in the world. We need to believe that Jesus is and in the resurrection, that we need to believe in Jesus and his resurrection. We need to confess with our mouth and call upon his name. And we'll get into this more because that's our subject today. So Lord, we come before you. And God, if there be any wicked way, if there be any way that would be contrary to you in our lives that we have allowed, or maybe we're not even aware of, because that happens too. So God, I pray this, I pray that Lord, we'd be repentive right now. And we would examine ourselves based on your word, not based on church, churches or uh, religiosity or anything like that, especially not the highly religious stuff. But God, it's a, I guess I'd say a high religion in that it's the only one and true faith in which, of course, we must be saved by the name of Jesus Christ. So Lord, before we partake, we take a moment to say, Lord, thank you for dying on the cross for our sins. Thank you for the beating that you took that we deserve. That's what the bread represents, was your body that was broken for us. And by your stripes, we are healed. And of course, the piercing of your body. That was also for our healing, for our breakthroughs. But it... Ultimately, your blood was shed and you died to cleanse us from all sin and unrighteousness. Everything we've thought of beyond what we should. We know temptation is not sin, 
But when we go beyond temptation, it becomes sin. And God, we ask you to forgive us of our sins. Heal our mind, will, emotions, but mostly our spiritual man. But God, you want us to be whole. So Lord, as we prepare to partake, I just pray that God, if there be anything in us that we need to get right with you, that we do it right now. Thank you, Lord, that you love us the way you find us. And you love us enough not to leave us that way. But you call us to follow so that we can thrive. Help us to thrive so others know how. Have your way, Lord. Let's go ahead and prepare to take the bread. Receive it. Lord, I want to thank you so much for taking the beating I deserve and the beating I will deserve. Lord, I want to be perfect. I don't want to make mistakes, but I've quit saying I'll never do that again. Instead, Lord, I've learned to say, Lord, with your help, I don't ever want to do that again. Keep me from it. Help me. I know I have my choices but I also need your strength because I'm not strong enough. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. You took the beating so our flesh could be stronger. You said to overcome as you overcame. So Lord, thank you for taking the beating I deserve. In Jesus name, let's take the bread. Ultimately, Lord, what makes the biggest difference is your blood being shed on the cross. We know when they beat you with that horrible whip, your blood was shed there too. But your death is what cleanses us. So we want to say thank you. Thank you for letting yourself die on our behalf. I want to thank you, Lord, personally. Thank you so much. Let's partake. I want you to take those pass outs with you. You'll be seeing them again and again. Because what we need to make sure is that we're always reminded of how to help somebody come to Christ. We need to not take the chance that we are around people a lot, but we never tell them how to come to the Lord. And I want to encourage you, give them away. I was going to make bookmarks, but I didn't, I didn't, this is as close as I got. And actually, I think that's okay. But you need to admit.